Hey, welcome back to the Scenery Farm. These are some uh, 2D drawings from uh, a designer I work with regularly. And uh, I, I, I've been given these, and these are showing plantons. And this shape here is a half-inch sheet of plywood. This is a half-inch sheet of plywood. Same thing is happening on stage the other side, stage left. This is a half-inch sheet, and this is a half-inch sheet. And then there are plantons. I'm not bothering to draw the rectilinear plantons. I am drawing the curved plantons because I'm going to stick those uh, through the CNC process. Um, now, these ones here have all been cut. So these half-inch plywood pieces I'll show you in the video, they've all been cut. Um, what I'm working on now is uh, the plantons. I haven't organized them. There's more for other flats that have to be done. This is a plan view of uh, the larger half-inch wall and the smaller one. We've changed the dimensions so the proportions are off a bit here but uh this is a plywood plate that sits on the deck that these pieces all get attached to they get screwed to and they're hard affixed and uh the, we cover the bottom of it in carpet and then we basically put a leash on it we slide it around on deck this door opens these are just some quickie drawings uh and i think they're the prelims so don't judge them um so uh what I have here are uh, how big a piece of plywood I'm sticking underneath it. I think it's like 22 inches by 74 inches, so just under two feet by, or two foot 10 by uh, seven feet. And on the other side, this one's about six feet long. It's a little bit smaller. So I've just taken these and I've duplicated them. And in duplicating them, I copied and pasted them to a, uh, a new sheet. And then what I did was I created a, um, uh, a, a piece of four by eight plywood essentially to show me how close I had to put them together to have this be able to be cut out of a piece of half inch plywood. And if you look at this, you can actually see that the, the piece I just added is just, you know, paper thin or whatever. It's got no thickness. And these ones here are half inch. And so when I export them, I export them as, oh no, I don't want to be top plan. I export them as uh, CNC5, and uh, I've tracked all my CNC um, on this document here. This is both the, the costing uh, for materials and such, but it's also my tracking document, uh, so I know what's going on. So it's screen A and screen B, they've already been cut, they're color-coded, done, and this tells me the file name, CNC5, is are the screen bases. So that's ready to go now and when i export that to uh, a dwg file uh or dxf file pardon me then i import it into uh a fusion 360 <laughs> blanking on the name of the software um i use uh i learned on autocad i use vectorworks because it's the software that is tied to uh light right at the school i teach York University, and um, really, I, I, for my purposes, it doesn't matter to me which one I use, so uh, we stay in the one lane. Um, and uh, once I import this, uh, I upload it in, I have Jack Banto uh, here, and then I go into manufacturing from design, then I go to my 2D uh, contour, and then the pop-up window comes, I select my tool, I set my cutting feed rate to 96 inches per minute, the ramp feed rate to 96 inches per minute. Um, I selected the contours, I, I selected these two, and in this case, it didn't matter to me which one I selected first, because if you click a little later on, preserve order, this here, they're just basically rounded rectangles, rectangles with a filleted corner. But if I were taking smaller holes out of this, I would cut these smaller holes first and then I'd cut this bigger piece because uh, my concern would be if I cut this outside edge first, then I went to cut these inner edges, the tabs might shear off. And you can see here tabs, uh, I'm doing this from scratch. I've already done this on the other one. So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go here. I'm gonna go to selection and I'll select this contour and I'll select this contour tabs i'm going to go in here i'm going to make them 0.75 wide uh i'm going to do them triangular i'm going to make the tab height 0.3 um the, these pieces are actually being cut currently 
and I'll set the distance at like 25 inches. And you can see there's just a, a two on the long edges, maybe three on the long edges and one on each of the short edges, which is just fine. Um, you can do manual tabs if you wanted to. Don't need to on this one. Uh, I set the stock top, um, none of this uh, malarkey of jumping between different reference points, except for the bottom, stock bottom. And once I've got stock top, and I just keep the uh, uh, default uh, offsets here, and then stock bottom, uh, I can set it lower. It's interesting, this plywood, I would set it lower if, uh, uh, if, the, if this were true half-inch plywood. It's not, it's um, at 7 16 plywood. Um, it's smoothish and a little bit potato chippy, but uh, it, with me telling the computer uh, that it's half inch thick, it means that I cut a 16th all the way through the material. And if I just wanna look at the side, what I can see is that the bottom is on the bottom of the piece that I'm planning on cutting. I have a safe current, uh, a point zero or a point one uh, inch uh, safe and then these are the other two the feed height and the clearance height or whatever um, I'm just going to go back to home uh, and then I go to passes and I want to preserve order and I would click this if I wanted to ensure that what I clicked on first uh, would be the first thing I cut and so on and so forth um, then I go into multiple depths I usually do a depth on the uh, M2 uh, of uh, 0.2 inches uh, cut, and then I can kind of wander away, order by islands is already checked, uh, but I check it just in case there's been an update, and like it doesn't default check that. And then I go to safe distance. The reason that was red is because the safe distance and the um, one of the other settings I changed were in conflict with each other. I get rid of lead out and lead in. I don't like that ramp I go to a 20 degree ramp angle and the clearance height I go to 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is uh well it's it's you know it's just under an eighth of an inch. So that'll take a while to ramp down to. So uh I go with 0 0.01 and that way it starts a little bit away but it uh it it definitely uh gets in there quicker and starts the cutting and then at that point I click OK. I'm not gonna bother because I've already created the file. Um, the file I created had a warning. The warning was no model selected and whatever it auto selected and it took care of it for me. Once that's done, I go to post process and then I give it the file name CNC5 and I've already have it uh, uh, saving to my CNC folder. Um, since that's already done and you can see I have all my CNC files cnc5 here and see there's the uh, uh that there the dxf is right there and if we go back to uh all this cutting you can see that the screens the big and the small screens for each uh screen a and screen b are cut and those are my cnc files in color coded green this is up next it's actually currently on the machine if i'm running multiple things and i like i have to think about where i'm at um i would uh, label this as I go. Um, and then I have started uh, tracking which curves I have to do. Once I do that, I dump this uh, onto a USB key, not this. I dump this CNC5 onto a USB key, and then I drag it over to the M2. I've just taken the uh, file and stuck it on that USB key uh no i haven't yet no no i haven't i'm completely lying i'm just prepping the machine so i have uh, a screw up the top of the m2 for it to sit on make sure it's in the right place a couple very low profile screws just to hold the chain there i tuck the vacuum hose and the power around the corner and i screw the boards on in this world um i have a phoenix nailer which uh is really a cool tool it shoots uh acrylic nails or plastic nails or whatever the heck they're made of if i'm worried i'm going to hit one of my screws but a screw is just so much easier to, to pop in and out um this is the screen b small wall and there's a lot of waste on there you'd think but i'm going to be able to use those strips of half inch somewhere else so i didn't mind uh, just leaving it in the center of the board uh, got a new sheet of, uh, this is uh, Dragonfly. Um, 
it's, you know, you get what you pay for. I'm not going to, uh, this show can't afford a uh, half inch white wood or maple, uh, plywood so dragonfly is uh an offshore birch uh, i don't even know where it comes from little little chippy potato chippy but it paints really well uh and i'm pre-drilling and countersinking into the mdf substrate here um you can see uh the underside of the m2 uh sled the, the vacuum attachment i'm not using it because uh i I, did, I wasn't a fan of it it got clogged up with all the sheet goods i was doing and when you're cutting with the grain, it just peels off and it was getting stuck. So I made my own dust route. I should probably do a video on what I did to uh, change the M2 at some point. Um, I don't need permission from anybody to do that. Uh, that's for sure. So anyways, that's screwed in place. And uh, I'm just going to prep the machine now. Uh, I always live in fear that when I do this, I'm going to start the machine and one of these chains is going to be hooked up or the vacuum is going to be hooked up. I mean, it is, I got in and out the door for like two grand, probably cost about 2,500 include like, I mean, two grand for the router and the, the package and everything. And uh, probably 2,500 with the vacuum and maybe the increase in prices that would have happened. Um, and that red thing at the top of the sled, there is a little vacuum uh, shroud that I made. Uh, I'm just ejecting um, the USB key now and making sure I was properly connected uh, to the machine still. Um, I was very, very fast. There was no editing there involved at all. Um, uh, important stool, because uh, sometimes I have to finicky with it. Uh, here's a better shot. So uh, I just turned on the router, and uh, I forgot to turn on the microphone. So, uh, and just ignore the date stamp. Uh, this cheapo camera I bought, uh, I got to turn it on and off, and the date's completely wrong. But uh, whatever. So this is me uh, loading the program into the M2 software. And uh, everything seems fine. And uh, there I go. I press play. And I, uh, I'll show you a bit of the start of the cut. Uh, there's no indication that this is going wrong. So I basically, at this point, I've used the machine enough that I, I basically, I just turn it on and once it starts running smoothly and I make sure uh, the surface of the plywood I'm cutting is at the same surface. There's no uh, under or bulging of the supports around the perimeter. Cause at this point when I'm cutting this close to the edge on the M2, if I don't support it, it'll tip on me. And then the cuts won't be perpendicular to the face. And here's the machine saying, yep, I'm ready to go. This is my start point And it starts just above the surface and, uh, then it just continues its cut. These are the uh, four other pieces that I've already done. Uh, they're sitting in the paint space. I haven't cleaned them up yet. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, screen B and our screen A big and screen A small. And so uh, in the time uh, I wandered away, oh wait, I recorded most of this video. And there's Jackson. Jackson's a good boy. He came and now he's going to lie down and wait for his bum to fall over. Till he's all fully relaxed. There he goes. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. All right. So that's how I, that's how I use my M2. Take care. See you next time.